Hi, it's Linda with creativeplr.com, and I'm back with another Canva tip. Actually, several tips in one, uh, but uh, you know how to use a tool in Canva. As you may or may not know, I am a high school teacher. I teach math, uh, but today I'm going to do some flashcards for friends that have young kids that are just learning to read. Okay, so uh, you don't have to think up these words on your own. There's a couple places that you can get them. And they're free resources, so we're not breaking any copyright law by copying and pasting. And so today I'm going to make flashcards for those young readers. Now, a flashcard is typically typically a 3 by 5 card. And you're going to be able to put 4 on a PowerPoint slide in landscape. So on an 11 by 8.5 inch sheet of a U.S. letter size paper, you're going to be able to put 4 of these cards. And so I'm going to make them in Canva. I'm going to save them as PNG, and then I'm going to go over to PowerPoint on my own time, and I'm going to put them in um, a file and save them and download them as a, as a PDF for teachers. So we're going to actually create them today, and we're going to create them so fast, you're going to say, oh my gosh, I could just be doing this. I could open up a Teachers Pay Teachers store or an Etsy store and sell lots of flashcards, and you'd be right. Now, the first thing I want to point out is in Canva, it's always backwards. So when I say three by five, I'm talking three high and five wide. But wide is always listed first in Canva. So you can see the first time I did it, I did it three by five and I had a tall skinny card, which is not what I want. I want a five by three. And so I want this. And I want, um, even though this is probably going to be printed in black and white, um, you want some kind of design or graphic or abstract something on the background to give it interest and i found the perfect one earlier when i was just shopping around i looked at handprints and i was like but i don't want to use pro okay i want to see if i can find something that's not pro because pro doesn't like us to sell oh this is maybe the first one i used pro doesn't like us to sell their things oh look here you go Here's one that's not pro, so we're going to use this. And I could edit the image if I like and make it brighter and make it a little more saturated. I like that much better. And then the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a box or a shape. And let's see, shape. And I want my old friend the rectangle, or in this case, the square, which I'm going to make into a rectangle. And since I know that these are going to be printed out, I want to make this white. And let's see, um, I want to make it white. But I think I want to add um, a frame around it. And you could make it interesting and do that. I kind of like to do something a little bit different sometimes. And let's move this around until I get my crosshairs because I want it centered. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create them. Uh, while you're watching, I'm going to create 46 task cards. And no, it's not going to be a long video. It's going to be a short video because I'm going to use a tool called Bulk Create. Now, I've been using it a lot, especially this morning, because I've been doing a lot of these task cards. I've been doing some affirmations. I've been doing experimenting with some other things that we could use Bulk Create for. <clears throat> so you might have to look at it under apps, but because I've been using it, it's already there. So I'm going to click Bulk Create, and it has two ways you can do this. If you have a file, like I do, um, that is a CSV file, that's an Excel file where all of the data has been saved as comma-separated values. Uh, it doesn't really know what it is. It just knows that it's, it's separate values. You could use that. I have my affirmations in a file like that. Or today, we could just enter the data manually. And when it pops up, it gives you two columns, and my... I, I can already see, I can go over, and there's two lists that we're going to use. One is a Dolch list, D-O-L-C-H, sight words. The other is Fry sight words. Either one of them is good. For elementary school, at least in the United States, they all use one or maybe both of these words. Uh, for preschool, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, up to sixth grade. And um, so if you're doing words for young readers, they have them separated by second grade, first grade, and there's lots of words. So, you know, I found this over here. They're not copyrighted. They're free. I didn't have to pay for anything. 
and they want people to read. So it's really important. So I'm just copying them. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to paste and I'm going to title my list Dolch. Although I'm going to try to spell it correctly. Okay. And if you want more than 23 words, we can go back over and we can get the other 23 words. And we always want to pretty up whatever we're doing for teachers and for kids. We always want to pretty it up with clip art and make it pretty so that it's not only usable and it's useful, but it's pretty as well. Okay. And so here's my 46 words. Could I keep adding words? I could keep going forever because there's over a thousand sight words in, in each of the lists at least. And so they're separated by different grade levels or words that they should know at that grade level. So you could, ex you could play with that. But for 46, for this demo, I'm just going to do the 46. Now I have my list called Dolch. And this is what I've done. I experimented with this bulk crate to see how it worked. And I'm going to put in my text and I'm going to call this and I'm going to show you what happened. And I'm going to put in word for my word list. And then the instructions said that I had when I was learning to do this, connect your word, right click and connect it to your data. And I'm thinking like, well, there's something broken. Oh, it does say connect data. So I'm going to connect my data to the Dolch, but before I do, I want to make my font bigger. And I found for these sight words that 67 is about, it takes the biggest word without me having to adjust anything. And I want to move it up a little bit because I want to go in and I want to add some clip art to it first. And I want to use handprints and um, that's a free one. So we could use that and, but we don't want any of the pro, no pro. Let's see. Let me see if I can find some that aren't pro. There is one and I'm going to scale it down and I can also turn it and let's see if I can find another one that's not pro. Now, if you're thinking, well, I like that handprint, but I wanted a different color. I want it slightly different. You can make it slightly different because you could just go up here and edit the image and, you know, change the color. And I mean, we've done that in another video, so I won't go through that again. Or we could change this one. Yeah, and, and do the same thing here. We can make it brighter. We can make it more saturated or less saturated. Or we could add a, jump up the contrast. I kind of like that. It looks like the one in the background. I'm going to do the same thing for that one so that I'm happy with my, hmm, let's see, yeah, a little brighter, okay. Okay, so now I have my words, and you're thinking like, well, um, what happened to the other 46? So look, I go in, and I click on my word. It says connect data, and I connected it to that list of words that I made, and it puts the list in brackets, and you, you may be thinking, I didn't want it in brackets. You don't need to worry because you're not going to have it, you hit continue and it says you want to generate all 46 pages and you go like yeah and then it opens up there it is now on some of these where the words are a little bit larger you can go through and you can play with your little clip art or you could just take it out or you could make it a little more transparent and uh, because it's one of those words that didn't quite fit and you could position it and you could say backward and you could put it behind the whole word if you want. Okay. And so you'd have to check each word. Yeah, that red handprint's going to be the death of me, huh? Check each word to make sure it's actually on there. But I found that 67 font will let me do like a six letter word easily. And that's what I had on that list for the most part. Okay. And you can do this and you see how bright and fun they are. And so parents would love these, teachers would love these, even though right now, today, while I'm doing this video, it's March, back to school season for sellers is in the summer. Schools start back to school in, well, my district teachers return in late July and students return in early August. And so, but, you know, in the big selling months are June, July, August, even September. But here's another tip for you. Teachers buy things all year round. We don't have a season where we buy things. We buy things constantly. 
So if a teacher is needing to buy your sight words, either in your Etsy store or in your Teachers Pay Teachers store, they will, um, they will actually buy all year round. Um, you can have different lists for different grades. Um, and this will be fun. Now, you want to save these as a PNG file. Then you're going to go over to PowerPoint, open up a, a, a new file. You're going to have landscaped 11 by 8.5, and, and you're going to put four of these on a, um, four on a slide. <clears throat> and you want to leave room between them so that when teachers print them out, they can cut them easily. Um, and if they want to laminate, they can, or they can do them in, in cardstock. And usually teachers laminate if they're going to use them for repeated use. Otherwise, they'd have to print a new one up every single day. Okay, I hope this has been fun, and you're going to start using Bulk Create to make all sorts of things fast and easy. Until next time, keep creating.